check out the Digitones. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this new box is and uh, why you guys made it. Uh, nice question. Well, so uh, now 2018, we are announcing the Digitone. Digitone is an 8-voice digital synthesizer. And at this core, it has an FM synthesizer which is made out of eight algorithms that you can select. Then you have four operators. And here we are. The fourth operator is controlled like this. So you can, you can see as I go higher, the fourth and the final operator is catching up. So it's kind of a macro control you implement in there. Now and then moving on, we have a harmonics parameter. Because as, uh, as that the viewers will know is that FM synthesis is made out of sine waves. And by this, the harmonic parameter, we can shape the sine wave to add a bit more bite and, um, you know, more interesting sounds happening here. Next, we have a, a detune parameter, which will detune the operators. So you can go really high and it will really get these metallic and strange tones. Then we have a feedback parameter, which is very common in FM synthesis. So you feed back, in, depending on which algorithm is selected and um, which one has that box behind it. You see the A has a box behind it. Yep. So that will be feedback in itself to each other. Oh, okay. and, and you can see that all of them have got different configurations. Can you Basically, do any uh, user configurable algorithms? Like can you move the operators around yourself and carry your No, unfortunately not. These okay. are fixed eight algorithms. And the reason why is that and you know, to answer your question is why we made this. Yeah. We wanted to have a, an FM synthesizer, a modern FM synthesizer in today's market, which is actually easy to use and friendly and streamlined. And it has a workflow where you can actually build compositions on. So therefore we built the digital. And to make it easy and streamlined, what we did is that we, we streamlined an FM synthesizer into eight parameters that I've shown you. There is more pages that we will get to, but this FM synthesis at the core is combined with subtractive synthesis methods. So we have a multi-mode filter here, which is coming after the signal chain. You have two different low passes and one high pass. Are they modeled on any specific type of filter, or is it uh, just like a new thing, or? I mean, the, the, these, uh, this filter is very similar to the Digitax filter, okay. but we have developed a new filter here, which is a bandpass based width filter, as you can see what it does. So you remove the frequencies, like this. So you have two filters there. Then you have an, an envelope. Now, how many stages are on the envelope? Uh, okay, we on the amp envelope, it's an ADSR. Okay. okay. On the FM envelopes here, you have attack, decay, and, well, type of hold, which we call it end, actually. So that is attack, decay, and end. Okay. Yeah. And um, so this is the FM modulation. Is there here. any possibility of adjusting envelope curves or anything like that? Um, this is the only options you have here. Okay. You, you can't change the curves. I mean, uh, you can change it, but to this extent. I mean, I mean as far as like logarithmic versus um, exponential, like, you know, um, shape, shape of the, the stages. You can't do it on these, but you can do you can do it, you have more... Um, With modulation? Exactly, you have exponential on here. Oh, okay, great. Exactly, so you can actually use these as like um, an envelope as well. Yeah. If you really slow it down with the speed, so you, you can do that. And these LFOs can be assigned to almost any parameter. So... You can do, you know, more interesting envelopes if you use the LFOs. But I find this quite enough for me. One neat trick that we have here is there's two parameters here which actually apply delay to these envelopes. Okay. And these are BPM synced. So if I set this to like 16, it will be in sync with the BPM or 32 or 24. And if I change the BPM, you know, slower or faster, they will adapt. Oh, very so they, cool. these are time sensitive delay parameters for the FM modulation envelopes. Yeah, that does sound geeky. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. Idea. So we show the filter, we show the drive. Yeah, we have a new um, uh, digital effects here. The, the chorus, which is modeled after like uh, vintage chorus type of stuff. 
and the delay and the reverb is from the Digitact. And to access the effect settings, you press function, and then, for example, this is the chorus settings here. You can send oh, the chorus nice. into the reverb. Then we have a delay engine. You can. This is the ping pong setting. How much stereo width you want? Feedback. If you go over 100, you get like an um, oscillation on the feedback. It's pretty crazy. Then you have a filter for the delay. Then you, the delay can go into the reverb. So the chorus can go into the delay and reverb, and the delay can go into the reverb. And finally, we have the reverb here. And then you have a filter and a shelving gain, frequency, and then again, the frequency here, and decay, and then pre-delay as well. So you have a pretty good set of effects there. And another thing is we have a master section. On the master section, we can make use of the inputs. So you can say, okay, the input level is this, and then you could pan it left and right. So in this configuration, you can plug in a stereo input and monitor a stereo out. If you have two mono inputs, you can then set them to center on the panning parameter and adjust the levels as you wish. And these sand uh, you can apply sand effects to the inputs. Oh, very nice. Yes. And last but not least, right at the end of the signal chain, we have a master overdrive, which applies effects to the incoming audio as well as the four synth tracks, which we actually haven't talked about, which we can go there and talk. So, as I said, this is an 8-voice digital synthesizer, but we have four tracks. Okay. And then you have an electron sequencer as well. In these four tracks, you can assign how many voices you wish, you wish from the available eight voices. By pressing the lips, you can say, okay, track number one has three voices assigned, track number two has two, and etc. And if you don't assign any voice to any of the tracks, then you have D. D stands for dynamic voice allocation. Okay. So the tracks, the four tracks will steal voices from each other. You have a unison mode and you have unison spread. And you can even layer the tracks. Okay, so can you set uh, chords up with that? Yeah, you can. So you can have like one track just be like different uh, chord variations on there and, and go at it. For example, what we can do is I could say, okay, I want track number one, I wanna have three voices. Now, so can that be parameter locked? The, the voice allocation cannot be parameter locked. Okay. But if you want that type of uh, voice allocation, I would recommend you use a dynamic. Yeah. Because we have actually kind of a very, um, uh, how to phrase this? It's quite an advanced way of like, um, you know, stealing voices and sharing yeah. voices, you know? And you could see which, how many voices are being triggered when I, you have eight squares representing a voice now when I press one, it's pressing three notes. And the reason is that because if I press this button, I go into the scale mode. So I can have a keyboard chord on. So now I'm pressing chords and you can see the notes. So if I change into a different scale, then I will have different notes, different chords. On the chromatic um, scale, you have major, minor, seventh, etc. You have a lot of chords there. So if I turn everything off and go back to the lips, and there you go, it uh, only has one now. But now if I, you know, press all that because it's set to dynamic. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And there is um, the, on, on the electron sequencer, um, each of the tricks can be a totally different sound. We call this parameter locking. So if I hold the step and say, okay, I want to have algorithm number one with ratios configured like this, with a lot of feedback, etc. And I could parameter lock all the parameters. So each step can be a totally different sound. Oops, that shouldn't happen, but um, yeah. So this sound is gonna be totally different to the rest of the sequence. Another thing is that we have um, trick conditions. So I can apply like a 50% chance of triggering this step. Or if I go further in the settings, I have access to like this type of um, triggering. So you have like mini patterns. Yeah. So this would trigger three out of four, you know, rounds. On the third out of four, it will trigger. This one, 
on the fifth out of fifth it will trigger etc oh, very nice yes so with this trick conditions with only a 16 step pattern length you can make amazing not i mean amazing is not the right word but very varied and complex sequences totally yeah. possible and something that can evolve exactly yeah and you also have like you can um, have got modes such as fill pre neighbor first yeah, a lot of ways to do that. Now, you think that it's over. No, it isn't. We also have an arpeggiator, which the arpeggiator can have its own sequencer. So you can actually oh, wow. change how you want. So you can actually edit your own sequencer, and you have a different uh, speed, range. So yeah, you, this is a really cool way to actually use that. And before we say goodbye, one thing that I missed out was the um, something unique about this FM engine is that if you look on each of the algorithms, there is an X Y output, yeah, and they all configured differently, and you have a mix of which output oh, you okay. want. So, so you can get different carriers out of it that way. Very and you cool. can you can also assign an LFO to that and make it wobble. Or you can use the LFO with a very slow speed so that this would become like an envelope. So you can have it gradually fading or out. Very cool. It's, um, it's immense. And finally, we have the USB port, which will be available in the future with Overbridge. So that you can have a, you know, um, you can connect your DAW and have multi-track audio running into the computer. Very cool. Well, this thing looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's the price point? Yeah, we're, um, we just announced it today. And the price point we're looking at is around seven hundred and eighty dollars, mm -hmm. and um, it's shipping today. It's available now. But, so I could just take this one right now. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, I mean you could do, but what about all the other people? Or me? Oh, you're gonna take it away from? Me? Um, so yeah, it's available now. Um, yeah, that's 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 the digital. All right, well that's great. Yeah, this is uh, Electron with uh, Flux with it. So it was great seeing you again, and uh, yeah, we'll check out some more products.